Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and wherever you are, I hope that you are happy and safe and managing to remain sane in this absolutely um, devastating and insane time that we are all going through. Um, massive thank you to Propel too, of course. My name is Amber Stainings and I am the founder of a company called Bums on Seats. Um, if we're not currently connected on LinkedIn, um, please do find me and you can get all of my sort of 20 year career history um, there. Um, and if you do get a chance to check out the website, bumsonseats.org, that would be awesome. But very, very quickly, Bums on Seats um, formed in January 2019. So this is year two for me. Um, obviously not quite the year that I was uh, anticipating as I'm sure the same with everybody. Um, but Bums on Seats was formed out of an idea that I, I had, most, noticing a gap in the market for an outsourced sales agency that can offer solutions, strategy, auditing, training, um, and really skilled sales consultants to come into your business and work with you or for you for X period of time. Um, Obviously, our main focus as a business is pre-book sales, and that's really the basis of this webinar today, is how can fewer bums on seats still be more profitable, um, and how does pre-book sales need to change or adapt because of COVID-19? So I've broken this session down into two key parts. And the first part is a question that I am sure we are talking about and um, asking and theorizing on daily at the moment. Um, and that is how might COVID-19 impact on our consumer behaviors um, for our sector? Um, and the second part, um, after we've done that first piece of work, is therefore, what are our new opportunities? Because there are opportunities, and I think it's really easy to um, see the negative, and of which, of course, there are a lot of that. There is a lot of that as well. But ultimately, um, there is going to be a lot that we can do and how we can utilise pre-book sales to our advantage coming out of isolation. So let's kick off. How might COVID-19 impact on consumer behaviour? So here are some of my thoughts. Um, delivery, okay, so it's been growing, it's a growing market, it has been for a number of years, um, through no fault of, of, of anyone's. This is the world that we are now in, and I certainly don't think it's going to diminish post-isolation, maybe slightly, but it's, it's key. Every bar, restaurant, pub should be looking now at what they can do in terms of home delivery, what that service looks like. When offices are able to go back in some capacity, I firmly believe that office delivery is also going to, to be a growing market. How do we deliver office parties, um, after work drinks, office lunches better to them as opposed to expecting them to come to us? Second part is capacity restrictions. We know it's going to happen. Um, if you are only able to book uh, or have, sorry, in your, in your pub bar restaurant, maximum 50% capacity at any one time, what does that look like? That's gonna impact labor, it's gonna impact um, table turning, spend per head, margins, profit, everything. So that's a fundamental area that we need to be tackling and talking about now. If you're a business that is heavily focused on food, I think you're probably going to be one of the first to open, which is great. Um, but again, let's link back to that delivery piece. That has to be equally as important. I'm convinced there's going to be a restriction on trading times, and it's a real shame for the sort of late night market, late night pub, uh, clubs and, uh, and bars, um, especially a shame for the younger generation. Um, but if we're only allowed to trade until 11 p.m., how do we push consumers into visiting us earlier and staying longer? Um, bearing in mind, we might only have 50% uh, capacity um, to offer as well. Group size, I think, is going to be heavily impacted, and this obviously spans everything from events, um, parties, um, just birthday celebrations, the whole shebang. Brands on Seats have spent months uh, working with companies on exactly making sure that they have a great offering for groups and how do we get more of them and how do we get more loyalty and how do we promote that. And unfortunately, I think that strategy does need to change quite quickly. For me, it's groups delivered, how do we deliver groups, sorry, 
to the home and the office. Um, and then how do we look after the twos and the fours and the sixes in the site? And I think certainly for the next few months, that's that's where we need to go. So that's going to be quite challenging, I think, for, for a lot of us, um, but certainly not impossible. Um, safety, mitigating risk, kitchen food safety regulations, sharing food, buffets over bowl food, all of that stuff is has to be a consideration. Our reg reg uh, reg regulation is going to tighten. Um, how do we very quickly let our customers know that we have adapted to COVID-19 and we are offering a safe environment? Um, really, 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 really important. I think as well, they're probably going to say table service only, but we talk about steps of service and our sector all the time, really important, right? But actually, the amount of time that we touch tables now probably needs to be reduced. So how do we get the most spend per head? How do we deliver the best customer ex experience and service if we're not able to communicate so much with our customers face-to-face? -face? I think virtual working is going to continue. Personally, for Bums on Seats, we've obviously very quickly um, got used to Zoom conferencing and, and Slack, which is fantastic. And I am completely, as a business owner, on board with my guys working more remotely. Um, and I think I'm certainly not on my own there. So how, how does that impact the number of visits and who visits our, our sites? Um, office socialising off-site will be heavily reduced. That obviously ties into our home and office delivery services. Footfall, um, we know footfall's going to take a long time to recover. How does that then counter with pre-book sales? Should we therefore pre-book more because we should not just be holding tables for walk-ins as much as we may have done in the past? Um, what's the risks around that? I think the travel and tour market is going to take a long time to recover, especially, um, obviously, um, inbound overseas. So if you are a business that currently has a lot of that um, market, then how can we think differently? Well, for me, it's about UK to UK travel, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Events are going to be restricted and reduced. Virtual parties, office parties, they're going to be happening virtually um, occasions and celebrations probably are going to be happening virtually more and more and what I would we used to do a fair amount of um, in sales and hospitality is the kind of good old-fashioned um, walk rounds and hotel concierges and knocking on office doors and yes that's always been getting harder and harder um, but I think that pretty much has to cease um, it, it just won't be happening so we are going to lose one way of selling um, now. What do we need to do to replace that? So there are my initial thoughts on how COVID-19 may impact consumer behaviour. Delivery, capacity restrictions, trading time restrictions, group size restrictions, key on safety and health and safety regulations, table service but less interaction from staff, virtual working, office socialising, low footfall, um, no... Travel and tourism is going to be affected, but more UK travel, events and large gatherings affected, occasions and celebrations affected, and um, reduced, heavily reduced to, to almost minimal to none face-to-face -face sales. All sounds a bit doom and gloom, but fear not. Pre-book sales comes into play here now more than ever, and um, that is because pre-booked can actually assist with all of those challenges. It helps with control. It gives you a tool to gain uh, pre-orders, upsells, packages, prepayment before anyone step foot into your establishment. It helps with turning tables and managing times, taking deposits, minimizing no-shows. It is your first point of excellent customer service and reputation and customer service is gonna be more key now than ever. It is how you can gain relationships and loyalty. You can get customer feedback, both delivery and visits. It's your way of building confidence and trust. And it really does show that you put the customer first. So pre booked has to be part of your reopening strategy, in my opinion. 
Bearing in mind that, I have got for you six key points um, that I want to just talk around that will hopefully give you some ideas and opportunities. So the first thing I would do during this period if uh, I was a bar, restaurant or pub would be looking at a internal audit. Now, Bums and Seeds audit lots of businesses and we've had some fantastic success because auditing really does paint a great picture of, of the company. Again, I'm linking this back to, to pre-book sales. So what do you audit? Well, number one is your systems, your booking system. Look at the data around, the, around that. Um, what does your system offer you? Are you using all of its capability? If you haven't got touch points now, but upselling and packages, do that. Really, really key. What then are your processes that support your system? So what's your cancellation policy? What's your deposit rules? Actually, we need to be more sensitive now than ever to some of these policies. But if you can only book 50% of your capacity, should customers be paying more depending on how long they want the table? How do you use your processes to turn tables? Really, really, really key. Also, look at things like your Wi-Fi and how you're using your Wi-Fi data. Is it as fast and secure as it can be? There's a potential that customers are going to be coming in and still wanting to Zoom their mates in a different pub or a different restaurant and sharing that experience online. So you've got to make sure that your technology is absolutely up to date. Um, all of that stuff is key. So do an audit. Do look at your systems, look at your processes and make sure that what COVID-19 is going to impact, your systems and processes follow. Second one is um, relationships and loyalty. Now, for me, this that is what sales is. That is that is sales, okay? It's people. And it's now more important than ever. What we have all been going through, some horrific stories and um, situations that this has caused. There is a real emotion that's going to be coming out here that we need to be letting our customers know we understand. Um, we must look at how we make our guests feel secure and, and, and relaxed in our environments. That first visit that they take into your bar, restaurant or pub is going to determine how frequently they visit you moving forward. It's almost like starting again. Um, so you've got to put your customer first and at the heart, but absolutely at the heart of everything that you do. Also, don't forget your community. So wherever your bar, restaurant, pub is, what's around you in terms of community, you must remain localised. And I think the more heartwarming stories around what you have done to support during this period and post this period is going to be really, really important. Do you look at offering your existing database, existing customer base, something a bit more generous when they, when they, when they come back in? Um, and how do you then follow up on those visits to gain loyalty and a second visit and a third visit? Um, got to put relationships and loyalty um, top of, of the agenda in my view. The third is, is, is what I like to nickname SROP, which is your sales reopening plans or, of course, your own reopening plans. But let's focus on the sales bit. Um, we've done a lot of work uh, as a company about this in the last couple of weeks so that we can really help businesses with their SROP plans. Um, and the first thing for me is how are you going to stand out? It's not about discounting, um, but it is about offering your customers, your potential customers, something simple but really impactful to make noise as soon as you are open to get them to come and visit you because there is going to be a lot of competition. So how did you really, really make it, make that work to your advantage? How do you then look at different demographics? Because there is very much going to be a differentiation of approach based on probably generations. So the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, how are they going to be behaving differently? If you currently don't have a particularly young um, following, this is your opportunity to get that. Um, be generous, be genuine. Um, 
data crunch and look at who is currently visiting you and who do you want to visit you. Repackage your products and your offer. Put in new packages um, that all go back to this idea of emotion and feeling safe and secure um, and actually understanding that every visit that you get now is going to mean so much more to that person than ever before and you have a responsibility to really help deliver that memory. Um, the fourth one, the fourth one, sorry, of course, is promotion. Um, and one of the other, one of the new ways that we can look at promoting our businesses um, during COVID-19 or with COVID-19. Um, one of the obvious ones that we talked about in, in Bums on Seats is Airbnb, because we do firmly believe that UK travel in UK is going to be on the rise. Who are your local Airbnb establishments? How can you link up with them? How can you create experience packages? And this idea of experience absolutely isn't going anywhere. It might just have to be not so uh, rigid to be delivered on site. I'll talk about that a bit later. So how can other contra deals and partnerships now really help open doors for you? Um, Hen and Stag do's. We lost a portion of Hen and Stag do's abroad for the last few years. I think we're going to get them back. Even if you think that's not your market, there are lots of um, different head and stand do's now. And um, budgets are, I mean, I think the average spend per head now is something about 98 quid a head. So it's quite tasty. So do look at that market and put that in your strategy if you can, if it works for you. Um, as I mentioned, we're not going to be knocking on doors anymore. So obviously digital marketing is key. And I think we all know that, right? Your social media strategy is key. Promotional videos, your Google 360, make sure that's updated. Host new business meetings with corporate clients on Zoom. Don't expect them to visit you anymore. How do you do a virtual show round or a showcase? How do you host your own virtual party? There's been so many businesses in our sector that have done this really, really well. I mean, I talk about Brewdog all the time time as just one example but you know really think about the 24 7 instant gratification that customers now demand and they demand it virtually so what is your technology and how are you using it gift cards and gift vouchers we've been begging customers to still buy into this right while we've been shut but i think there's an opportunity there for delivery as well so Make sure for all your deliveries, there's a bounce back in there to get them into the site as well. Interestingly, when I've been um, ordering home delivery, of course, like the rest of the world, I've picked out a couple of new restaurants, one particular Italian restaurant in Guildford, and it was absolutely amazing. And I know as soon as I can, I will be going in there for a visit because the two are very, very much linked. So yes, look at different strategies, but don't forget that they have to also be coherent, um, both home delivery, office delivery, and inside, all three must be equally as important. Um, if you've got private hire space, completely private with your own um, toilets, entrance, fantastic. How can you promote that in a different way now and show how safe and secure that is for groups coming directly from an office or from a family into that space and not having to mix with Joe Public. Go for it. Make sure your website reflects that. Get all your videos up to date, absolutely. If you unfortunately have more of a semi-private hire space, how does that then need to adapt? How do you use that in a different way? Um, because I think the events industry is, is going to have a bit of a hit. And I've got a lot more thoughts on that, which I'll probably share with you at a later date. The fifth one is delivery, um, and I've sort of banged on about that um, a lot, incorporating that into the other elements that we've already talked about, but delivery, delivery, delivery. What is your office party experience delivered to their office? What is the office drinks after work delivered to their office? What can you do um, to make sure you don't lose customers to delivery and that you stand out in delivery it must be really simple but effective your service standards for delivery really important as well your follow-up for delivery really important as well it is still a sales um, 
piece, it does need a sales plan. Um, so that has to be the fifth element that we, we talk about as an, actually as an opportunity because it's now an additional revenue stream where you may have done a bit of it before with delivery, it now can be bigger and bolder and actually do it yourselves as well. So delivery, 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 delivery. Um, and the last one, number six, is reputation. Um, I mean, wow, I think we're all coming out of this with stories of companies that we've seen that have been phenomenal um, and also businesses who we know haven't. And I'm not just talking uh, about our sector at all. I think as a whole, hospitality has been incredible, um, how we have looked after people, how we have fought for answers. Um, there's been, uh, it's just been humbling and, and, and really heartwarming to see what's been happening in our sector, to be honest. And I feel very lucky to be some tiny, whiny, whiny part of it. But consumers are going to be watching you even closer than they have been before. As I mentioned, that back to pub bar restaurant first visit experience has to be perfect. They are going to be expecting um, a lot and quite rightly too. So, you know, please don't get that wrong. The individual now has a bigger circle of influence than ever, doesn't it? And I talk about this a lot when I do training, but, um, you know, friends, family, absolutely, but the whole world of, of, of digital and social media. So you need to make sure that when people are posting and sharing about their experiences in your establishment, it's absolutely spot on. Make it work to advantage, not be disadvantage. Um, also, health and hygiene is going to be key. So um, how are you how are you making that clear and apparent? And how do you get a really positive reputation around that, which is absolutely critical making sure that again you are following up with every person that visits um, and allowing people a forum to give you recommendations and feedback um, don't shy away anymore from online reviews face it head on we know we've the trip advisor is the devil in our industry but actually we really need to be working alongside these forums now um, because people have a long memory and how we look after our staff and our customers is key. So make sure that everything you do is genuine um, and it's with conviction as well. Um, and I believe if you look after your, your, your people, both staff and customers, that the profit margins will come um, because it's, it's hospitality. If we give us, it's what we do. So just to recap, um, the opportunities with COVID-19 are auditing of systems and processes and making sure that you have all the tools in place to turn tables, increase spring per head, get your packages up to date, take as many pre-orders and upsells as possible. Relationships and loyalty. How do you reward and recognise your customers and also your staff as well? Um, how do you make that work for both delivery and insight? And really show that you understand the emotion behind the situation that our society is in. Um, number three is reopening plans. So get on with this now. What is your stock plan? What's your sales reopening plan? How aggressive can you be? How do you come out of the starting box and really make noise? When do you do that? How do you look at new demographics, understanding how those demographics are going to change? And what is that going to look like? And how long is that going to go on for? Fourth one is promotion. What are the new and different ways you can do to promote? Maybe you've done a bit of video before, do it a lot more. Maybe you've got great social media, fantastic. How can that be even better? Absolute gloves off approach to the ways that we should be promoting our businesses now in this sort of digital virtual world. Um, delivery, 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 home, office, packages, date nights delivered to your office. Sorry, not your office, date nights delivered to your home. You know, all of that stuff, go for it. Um, it has to be a key revenue stream for you. It's, it's your backup um, as well. Um, and it will enable you to still 
offer groups a service off-site. So go for delivery. Uh, and the sixth one is reputation, reputation, reputation. So um, don't get it wrong. Deliver the best possible service that you can. Do it with heart and warmth. Um, remain genuine and remain true to your customers. So I hope that has um, helped in some way. If you would like to um, speak to me about anything at all, um, I obviously have loads more ideas. Um, so do give me a buzz. The contact details will be coming up shortly and we'll get in touch via the website. And um, I really, really hope to see you all very soon face to face. But until then, Stay safe, stay smiling, stay sane, and thank you very much for listening to me and Bums on Seats. Cheers.